Hello, everybody. Welcome to Trek on Tuesday. I'm Gina, and you guys know Aaron. Hey, Aaron, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Gina. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well. I'm just like a tad sleepy, and I wish that I had like something just like so comfortable, and mm -hmm. cozy, and warm to snuggle up into. But Let me, yeah. nothing like it's, that's ever been invented except it's bed. Oh, so funny that you mentioned that, Gina, because I was just thinking there's nothing like snuggling into your nice warm comfortable sleeping bag when you're out camping what a great thing maybe we should talk about sleeping bags today on trek on tuesday what do you think i am so glad you mentioned sleeping bags i totally forgot that they existed yes, just kidding exactly. guys I mean, my sleeping bag is under my bed that's mm -hmm. how important it is to me um i know we're talking about how they keep you warm but it's so hot here in texas and we don't, don't really have right basements now. where we live so I don't want to destroy my sleeping bag by storing it up in the hot attic. I, I keep it under my bed. Hey, Todd. Yeah, uh, I, I keep mine in my hot attic, actually. But we do have uh, some tips to share about storing sleeping bags, caring for sleeping bags. But I think the main point we're going to start off with, Gina, how to buy the best sleeping bag. And as you can see there behind the scenes, Brian, thank you for putting that up there. This story is from the latest issue of Scout Life magazine. Yes, latest it issue. Is, I think it's the latest one, right? It's the September issue. Yes. Okay. So it's in the future, but you actually have access to it now, both mm -hmm. in the Scout Life app and those of you who have a print subscription probably have it in your inbox. That's a um, that's a little cool thing that we've done over the years here on our little Trek Gene is we give people a sneak preview of an issue a week or two before they actually will get it in the mailbox or at their local Scout shop or whatever. Kind of cool. It it's super cool, and this story particularly is so important to us. It is in the magazine, it's on the app, it is on the website. That mm -hmm. is how much we care and are passionate about sleeping bags. I know yep. our audiences as well, we would encourage you guys to give your sleeping bag care tips and yep. maybe product product picks in the comments. We will love to read those and we are able to now show those on screen. If you yep. wanna read today's story along with us, the URL at the bottom of the screen will take you there or you can go to the app, the Scout Life app and access this story for free. Um, yes, I, um, uh, the sleeping bags are important, you know, which is kind of why we chose this topic today and why we're going to spend half an hour or so about it today. A good sleeping bag, as the story says, can make the difference between a comfortable night and a long, miserable, not so comfortable night. I don't think it's, I don't think I'm exaggerating by saying it can make or break your trip. I've got some personal experiences, uh, both good and bad with sleeping bags that I would like to share throughout the show. Um, but yeah, Me too. lots of good stuff to talk about. Yep. Me too. You, you can, well, we'll get there in terms of the temperature rating and all that. Hello, two pack 25, 40 in clean Texas. And also I just had a wake up call that scout life magazine is indeed an independent sentient being because it has commented and, and it isn't me. Um, it is scout. Life <laughs> I think saying. this is the first time this has ever happened. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, we, we, we're so happy to have scout life watching though. Thank you for watching scout life magazine. Thank you scout life. And, and honestly, great tip. You get the theme and tone of the show, Aaron. We mm -hmm. are often correcting Aaron. The tone of the show is magic. basically <laughs> correct. Everything Aaron says. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and everything Aaron says that he does. Don't do what Aaron says. Do, do as he Aaron does? Doesn't do. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, do as he doesn't do. Ah, <laughs> the classic saying. Um, okay, Aaron, what if I read the intro to this and then you get us going with the first section? I cannot wait, Gina. Let's do it. Perfect. Okay. If you are looking at the um, online version of the story, you're going to see that there are a few... Uh, additional resources at the top of the story that you can read for the reading about sleeping bags. Now, this story is by Michael Lanza, and we are saying a good sleeping bag can make the difference between comfort and a long, miserable night. Like Aaron said, you're going to want to follow these tips on choosing the right sleeping bag for your adventures. And there's a reason why we have Michael Lanza write these stories and not Gina or me. Gina's a lot smarter than I am, but Michael is the smartest. He knows about sleeping bags, so you can definitely take this as solid advice. Um, the first thing Mr. Lanza says in the story, know your body. Uh, for example, if you are always wearing a t-shirt in camp, everyone else is wearing fleece and you're not cold, that means that you're comfortable in slightly cooler temperatures. You can get a bag rated about 10 degrees lower than the lowest temperatures you encounter on your trips. For example, uh, if you it's gonna get down to 50 degrees at night or whatever it is, 
get a temp, get a bag that's rated down to about 40 degrees. We're going to talk a little bit more about those temperature ratings here in just a second, Gina. However, if you're one of the first people to put on a jacket when it gets cold outside, uh, everybody else is running around in short sleeves and you're the like, I need a sweater, I need a sweatshirt, something like that. When you hang around camp, that's a clue that you need to get a bag rated 20 to 25 degrees lower than the coldest nights you anticipated. Does that make sense, everybody? Um, if you're basically warm natured, only 10 degrees lower for your rating. If you're likely to get cold, go 20 to 25 degrees lower than the low temperature for that night. Does that make sense, Gina? Did I say that right? Yeah, it absolutely does. I like putting that little bit of like a like a, a bear or like a some padding in there for yep, lack exactly. of a non-punny term. Yeah, exactly. But you're not gonna get a good night's sleep if you're cold. So definitely the worst. yeah, go a little bit colder than you're expecting. Yeah, but I, I had never heard that tip before about that's a great point because obviously what feels cold to someone else might not feel cold to you. Uh, most right. of us, most of us who are married have experienced that with our spouses when it can be the same temperature in your house. And yet somehow one of you is freezing and the other is not. Obviously on a camping trip, that's going to apply. And when you buy a sleeping bag, again, that is also going to apply. Carlos's pack, oh, shout out to Carlos's pack 367. Todd says don't use down sleeping bags. Okay, Todd, Todd we're going to actually I'd talk like, about that in a yeah. second, but that's interesting. Go ahead and comment with yes. your thoughts on why I you don't want love a down to know sleeping more about bag. That. I agree. And Gina. yeah, we, I think we're going to have a lot of conversation when it comes to temperature, but before we get to temperature ratings, we want to remind you to know your budget prices vary depending on factors like type and quality um, of insulation, as well as materials used. For instance, a bag rated zero degrees uses much more insulation than a 30 degree bag. There are budget picks for a variety of sleeping bags, whether you need something rated for super cold weather or warm weather. This is just a general assessment. I think when you have a lower budget, what you're going to look at, find, is that you're going to get a bulkier sleeping bag. It's going to be using like polyesters and things to keep you warm as opposed to with some sleeping bags, you can make them pretty compact and still warm with more expensive stuffing kinds of things. We'll get into that. Yep. And I think and you also pay extra for uh, yeah compactness, right? The ability to compress it down, which I think we're also going to get into that you pay extra for the ability to compress it down into a backpack. Guess what? If you're going Cub Scout family camping, maybe that doesn't matter. You don't necessarily need to pack it in a backpack and carry it around, you know, Philmont for 10 days or whatever it is. So that definitely, there may not be a reason to spend extra for a bag that's just as good if you're throwing it in the back of your car or even just dragging it out, you know, a mile or two to camp or whatever. Um, Eric has chimed in with something that I think is really interesting. And I don't know why I do not do this. I totally should because one of my complaints is, especially with something like a down sleeping bag or some of the fancier insulating materials, you're not supposed to get them wet. Mm -hmm. And um, that's just so dirty to me. But Eric says, I always recommend using a sleeping bag liner. It gives mm -hmm. a few more degrees of warmth and keeps your bag clean. You can throw the liner in the wash and not have to worry about dirt and oils getting directly on the inside of the bag. Brilliant. A, a lot of times they're fleece and they're so mm -hmm. comfy. Yep. And yep. Go ahead, Aaron. I was <laughs> a liner doesn't take up that much extra space. You can fold those guys up pretty compactly. So if you're worried about that, uh, you don't want to buy a big bulky bag. A liner might be a thinner, lighter way to give yourself a few yes. more degrees of comfort if it's going to get chilly. Well, and my dad, I've camped with my dad when he's brought me a liner before, and it was awesome because I ended up using the liner. At, it's Texas again, hot. I ended up yep. using just the liner, no right. sleeping bag, that's... using the sleeping bag as a pillow. It was the most comfortable sleep outside I've ever had. Yeah, that's another great point. The liner <laughs> gives you so much flexibility. It's almost like you've bought a second sleeping bag. If it is too hot for your regular sleeping bag, you can just lay on top of that bad boy, use it as a pillar, pillar. Use it as a pillow Hello. and sleep inside. Sleep inside the liner. Uh, speaking of temperature uh, temperatures, Gina, there is a thing on sleeping bags temperature ratings. Sleeping bags are usually rated for the lowest temperature used. Many manufacturers use the EN or ISO rating system, which is, which is a standard measurement, standardized measurement of warmth. But still, Gina, what feels cold to you might not feel cold to me. So just because you know. The, IO, the ISO rating system says, oh, hey, this bag is rated down to 30 degrees. That doesn't 100% guarantee. Oh, you're fine if it gets down to 30 degrees. You can just sleep in a t-shirt and shorts. That is not necessarily the case. Uh, it's different, obviously, depending on what you're comfortable with. This is just basically the best way you can create a standardized measurement. All things equal, if you've got two sleeping bags next to each other, one of them is rated for 30 degrees, and the one next to it is rated for 50 degrees, 
you know which one is better for warmer weather. If you're not going to be, if you're not going camping in the winter, if you're not going to be sleeping outside, if you're more of a, a three season camper, maybe it's not worth it to spend that extra uh, for a sleeping bag that's rated lower. Or you can just focus all of your um, your monetary value on the the bells and whistles of an expensive bag that's only rated down to 50 degrees. You can get one higher quality, more compressible, things like that. These are all different things you need to think about when purchasing a sleeping bag. Sleeping bags are not always cheap. So it's yeah. something you really want to think about a lot. Sure. I also, you might be thinking like, well, I don't know. Like it's going to be too late if I buy a sleeping bag based on what I think I feel. And I get out there and I just, uh, you know, like I'm not happy. It's too hot. It's too cold. What have you. This is where I think that scouting has a real leg up. We've got scout shops. And unlike a lot of different outdoor retailers, you can be certain everyone working in a scout shop is nerdy for scouting. They are nerdy for outings. They have been outside with every sleeping bag, cheap, expensive, everything you can ever imagine. They're very familiar with the products that are there in the scout shop. They can kind of guide you on which direction you should go with a bag. Yep. 100% agree, Gina. Very good. Okay. So we talked about knowing your budget. We talked about knowing your body. We talked about temperature ratings. I'll also add, I don't know where you fall on this, Aaron. There is like a series of mid temperatures where you really want to make sure you have the right bag because you're not going to, like if it was hot, you're not going to be able to say, ooh, um, it's pretty warm here. I'm going to use an alternative you know, blanket and lay on top of my sleeping bag or what, what have you, or cold where you can layer up. Like it's, it's crucial in those mid temperatures, I guess, and the super cold ones to make sure you get the right bag. I would say though, in the warmer temperatures, you have a lot of flexibility. And mm -hmm. I think it's pretty common for a lot of us to not even be using a blanket at all when it's hot outside. Totally agree hundred percent. And uh, uh, there's been yeah plenty of times where I've used my sleeping bag just to sleep on top of, or like you say, nice little comfy pillow. That's the worst case scenario. Uh, again, yeah, assuming totally. that like weight and carrying it with you isn't a big deal. You're not wasting space on a backpacking trip or something like that. Right. So good advice from Todd there that just popped up on the screen. Uh, been there, uh, done that, Todd. That's what do you do when you wind up with a too cold of a sleeping situation, Aaron? Layer so, up, I guess. Um, yeah, that's like what I did. We actually did it, believe it or not, it was on a Cub Scout uh, trip, Gina, and it was my me and my son's last uh, chance. It was our last chance to go camping with our Cub Scout pack uh, because he was about to cross over in a Scouts BSA. So we had one last camping trip. You know, they they cross over, and it was around March, I think. And you know, in Texas, sometimes in March still can be cold outside. So sure enough for this last Cub Scout camp out, the forecast was down into the, into the thirties. Uh, we packed the heaviest sleeping bags that we had, but it ended up getting, it ended up getting below freezing or close to freezing. And so both me and my son, uh, yeah, basically slept in our winter clothes in the sleeping bag. It, it was actually fine. We slept fine. Uh, but you know, it was a struggle. I mean, we had to basically keep all of our clothes on, you know, um, long underwear, our comfortable fleece and then like even like a jacket or, or like a, a jacket uh, under in the sleeping bag to stay warm. Uh, also yeah, a so. hat or a hood, like go hood yes. up. Hat. Yeah, that makes sleep. a huge difference. It takes a few minutes and then you really feel it. Well, you know what we learned is that, you know, it's not great. You might think, oh, I can just zip myself totally inside my sleeping bag. That for me was not super comfortable because you're breathing in, uh, you're breathing in your own air. You need a little more, you need some circulation there. So it's great to have your face sticking out of your sleeping bag with your hat pulled down. You keep a lot of that heat from escaping. So hundred uh, percent. We've got a comment that says that I need the sleeping bag to prevent, um, to keep critters off me. It's like a security yeah, thing. That, I, I could totally that. see that. Yes. I could totally see that. It's kind of like, that. even in my bed, I don't like my feet peeking out from under the blanket. I don't like the blanket touching the ground because I'm afraid yes. bugs will crawl up onto it. It's a whole thing. Okay. Yes. I, I one time, Gina, on a scouting trip, spent the night uh, outdoors in a sleeping bag, in a lean-to, uh, so a, a little shelter with it had three walls, but one wall was open. Well, there was a thunderstorm in the middle of the night, so all the critters in the forest, it felt like, ran Rainy. into our lean-to because it was the only place where it wasn't raining. So, yep. I mean, for like two hours at night, there were little critters scampering all around. We could hear them running all around us. And yeah, I've never been so covered up into a sleeping bag in my life I don't know what they were, to be honest with you. They were small. I don't think they were dangerous. 
but they, they were, were trying to get dry. Cute. I'm sure they were cute little mice or something like that. Oh, uh, so, but yeah, yeah, you don't anyway, want those. But I was, I, yeah, I didn't want to have any any part of my body exposed outside of my sleeping bag. Absolutely. Okay, we're getting into a topic now, and Todd already commented on this, but synthetic yes. versus down insulation. There are two main types of insulation, down and synthetic. Down's generally warmer, lighter, and more packable than synthetic insulation, especially higher quality down rated 800 fill and above. But it's typically more expensive and loses its ability to keep you warm if it becomes wet. There are some water resistant forms of down. Synthetic retains its ability to trap heat if the bag gets wet. These sleeping bags are usually heavier and less packable than down bags, but they're also less expensive. They're the best choice for wet adventures. I would liken this to maybe your sleeping pillow at home on your bed. You've mm -hmm. probably seen that there are down and synthetic options. And oftentimes like the hypoallergenic pillows are, are synthetic and they market themselves as washable. Mm -hmm. A lot of times those, wa those um, sleeping bags are also washable. Yep. And then there are your down or even some of the down alternative pillows that you really are not supposed to get wet. You're supposed to put them in like a waterproof cover. And for the vast majority, you cannot wash them. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I, uh, I have used a down sleeping bag before in cold weather, uh, but it was in, we were in again, a shelter. It was an open shelter. It wasn't, it wasn't climate control, but we had a roof uh, and, and a, and a, um, uh, uh, a screen, a screen, like a screen in all around us, you know, so we were protected from critters. Uh, we protected from rain, but we were not protected from the temperature and it got to be freezing that night. I remember, but the down sleeping bag for that situation was perfect. Very so warm. warm. Didn't have to worry about it getting wet. We actually, you know, our car was, was, 10 feet away or whatever, right? So you just, just throw it in the car, take it home on the way home. Um, the flip side of that scenario, Gina, happened to me one time when I went camping in a tent and I made a, it, it, I made a, it wasn't very, it was during the summer. Uh, so it wasn't like it was cold, but it did, it cool. It was an area where it would cool down at night and it happened to rain this one night. And I learned the hard way that I had chosen poorly. I did not inspect my tent before I took it out there and there were little holes in it. So I got leaked on pretty bad at night. And my sleeping bag got, by the end of the night, was pretty darn wet. I was very thankful. I mean, it was only, you know, 50 or so degrees. It wasn't that cold, but a wet sleeping bag, uh, you know, that, that, that could be bad. Cold, that could be bad. So, but thankfully it was a, uh, it was a synthetic sleeping bag and I'll be dang. I mean, it, it was wet. I wouldn't say that I was comfortable, out. but I was absolutely warm. It absolutely retained its ability to keep me warm, which really probably saved me from the embarrassment of having to go wake up another grown up and saying, hi, sorry, my uh, tent's leaking can I borrow your sleeping bag or, or some, or do you have an extra tent or something like that? So uh, thankfully it didn't rain the rest of the trip. I was okay. I was able to just hang up the sleeping bag and let it dry, but I was really glad it was synthetic. Uh, definitely you're, made it, made a, made sense. You're quite the adventurer, Aaron. There, there is one more <laughs> ironic thing I'd like to point out. So the synthetic yes. sleeping bags are generally a bit bulkier, you know, and the down yep. bags can be compressed in like stuff at bags and things, which we'll talk about. But the irony to me is that, long-term storage for the synthetic sleeping bags you can usually leave them pretty compressed wrapped up whatever and then you know they spring back to life yeah. and they can be fluffed what have you right and the down you're really not supposed to leave it all the time smushed down because it'll like break the feathers it'll, and it'll things stay inside. smushed mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so right. i guess it's something to consider depending on your what you're using it for but like let's say you're a family you guys have seven kids you're not going to the back country a whole lot you're never going to backpack you're going to do more car camping Mm -hmm. That might be a case for synthetic because if you're going to be storing those things in your hot attic or your basement, what have you, you might appreciate that they can be compressed. Mm -hmm. And even my sleeping bag that I keep under my bed, it's down. And so it comes, and a lot of them do now, they come with two bags. They come with a stuff it sack that compresses it. And then mm -hmm. they have like a mesh airy bag that you can store it in throughout the year. Yep. Maybe we're going to yeah. get into that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, ki kind of along those lines, Gina, something else to consider when you are looking at a sleeping bag, looking to buy a sleeping bag is the weight of the sleeping bag. It, it matters, especially when you're backpacking, like we said, not as much when you're car camping. Um, again, you can spend extra money for a lighter, higher quality insulation if that is worth it. It's that something you need. If you don't need it, you don't need to do it, right? So think about what you're going to be using it for lighter, higher quality insulation costs more. You can reduce, you can also reduce weight and bulk by not buying a 15 degree bag when you only need a 
30 degree bag. So, um, you know, if you know, well, hey, me and my my Cub Scouts, we're not going to go winter camping anytime soon. Um, there's no reason to spend extra money on a 15 degree bag when a 30 degree bag will work fine. And there's no reason to buy, spend extra money on a lighter weight bag when it really doesn't matter. So these are all just things you have to factor in to your budget, into your consideration. What exactly do you need for you? What are you going to be using it for? Um, all that stuff like that. Right. Now, next on the list, um, we're talking about something extremely important. Just kidding. I think this is probably one of the least consequential items on your decision-making list, but it's still something to think through. Do mm -hmm. you want the mummy shape versus the rectangular shape? The mummy shapes taper from head to foot for thermal efficiency, less space to heat up, and minimize weight and bulk, but some can feel claustrophobic. Rectangle bags are more spacious, but generally heavier, bulkier, and sometimes have cold spots. Treat bags like boots. Try it before buying. My take, there's really no reason not to get a mummy bag, personally, unless you're getting like a great deal on a rectangle bag or you have some alternative purpose for it, or maybe you use it more as a sleeping pad than a sleeping bag, like an extra pad. But I don't know. What do you think, Aaron? I, I say go mummy bag personally. I, 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 yeah, I've used mummy bags and I like them fine. I do think maybe some folks though can feel claustrophobic because but yeah, that would be the only reason. Um, cause it's, it's feel snug. It doesn't bother me. I'm totally fine with that. But I do think that maybe if you are a tendency, um, you know what someone told me actually, Gina, at I was at REI one time looking at sleeping bags and the salesperson there said, what you should do is go home, wrap yourself from head to toe in a blanket in your house, lay on your bed and see how you feel. If you're comfortable wrapped up from you know above your head to below your toe, wrapped around, you know, roll yourself in the blanket, roll over. And if that feels okay, then you're probably fine with a mummy bag. Now, if you want, you could probably stick your head out a little bit, right? Because that's a more simulation of what it's going to be like. But if that snug amount, that doesn't bother you, I agree, you know, there's no reason really not to buy a mummy bag because I do think it, it makes sense. Science says that the less air that's inside that bag, the faster you're going to warm up, right? In, in, a, in a rectangular sleeping bag, there's some wasted space there with some air off in the corners that's going to circulate and be harder to keep warm. The tighter it is, just like a, just like a jacket, right? When you wear a winter jacket, it needs to be, it okay. needs to fit the right way. Yeah, you don't want a real loose baggy jacket, the same thing applies to a sleeping bag. Right. And I guess too, it's worth noting that there are sizes for these. So there are different sizes, especially with a mummy bag. And I'm thinking mm -hmm. maybe mine's big because it just doesn't seem, claust it doesn't, doesn't seem like someone yeah. being claustrophobic in it. And I'm thinking about one thing behind the scenes. Brian says, my wife hates mummy bags. So I'm glad to know that there are people with strong opinions. on Okay. It. There you go. But I'm also thinking um, of like, you might have some brand allegiance or something and some don't make mummy bags. I am thinking yes. of like my dad and brother are very big into their Carhartt sleeping bags. You know, they're Carhartt on the outside. And then they're like this fleece, like they're very comfy on the inside. Let us know if you have one of those commenters. I'd love to, to hear about it, but they don't make well, that in a mummy bag. Well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And T Todd says that he pulls the mummy bag close at the head, but I'm curious, Todd, do you do it over your head or you mean at your head, like right here to keep you comfortable? Cause I know I do admit, I don't, I don't know if I'd call it claustrophobia, but I don't like the bag to be sealed shut over my head, but mainly because I feel like the air gets uncomfortable, but, but maybe that's, maybe some folks are fine with that. Um, and you see that Todd also says he has a tent that uses air yeah. and not poles. That's, that's interesting. I've never heard of that. Up. I haven't I either. That. <laughs> I know I do too. That sounds great. I wonder how, uh, compact, I wonder if, you know, if it folds up and you can carry it around pretty easily, or is it something you have to more like, uh, you know, keep in your car or something like that? Yeah. I'm curious. Um, there are a couple of other uh, comments about, or a couple of other items about sleeping bags that I want to go over real quick. Gina, construction of a sleeping bag, how it is built. Less expensive yet lightweight bags have sewn through baffles, uh, which is like along the seams, the little baffles as it's sewn through. That can create cold spots because those are tiny little holes along the seams there. So even though they are teeny tiny, that does that can make a difference uh, in cold weather. So. Uh, you know, that's a, that's kind of a trade-off again. It saves you some money if you buy one that is constructed that way. However, uh, if you spend more, if you're willing to spend more money, higher quality, uh, horizontal baffles are typically warmer. Uh, also look for a draft tube along the zipper collar and no snag zipper guard. Um, I'll be honest, you know, I don't know what a draft tube is. Do you know what that means? Mm -mm. Look for a draft tube. We're gonna have to ask Michael Lanza 
for clarification, if anybody watching knows what a draft tube do is, you, do you think I bet it's behind the scenes that, Brian can look it up for us real quick. I bet behind the scenes Brian knows. Mm -hmm. I'm going to guess it's something – I like the idea if it's something that lets air in the bag. You can definitely tell what climate we are coming from because I'm usually yes. feeling like they're too hot sleeping bags. So Eric says a draft covers... tube, which I guess is to keep it, Eric, why? To keep it, uh, why do you need to cover the zipper? the of what I was saying. To, I keep, think to keep air to You to know the gap insulation? where the two zippers hit? Yeah. They, they don't, they're not necessarily rectangular. I'm going to guess it's something that covers that tiny bit of like little two holes that are right there. That's, that's to, my guess. To keep cold air from coming in. Yeah. Is that the okay. Idea? Okay. Mike says so. Air doesn't get come through the zipper. Gotcha. Mike has a great point about rectangular bags. Mm -hmm. In a yep. rectangular bag, you have room to store bo boots, socks, clothes, etc. At the bottom, so they are nice and warm when you wake up. I say I save have, a mummy bag for backpacking. That. Very good. I have a hundred percent done that, Mike. Uh, slept with extra clothes inside my uh, sleeping bag, almost because it serves as like extra an extra blanket or extra warmth. Uh, but also, yeah, it keeps them warm. Also, I mean, if it's really cold, it's probably would only be a fact if it's freezing. I've heard people say sleep with your water bottle inside your bag because it is possible your water bottle could freeze. You wake up with a frozen water bottle overnight if it's if it's that cold. Yeah, true. Um, you don't want to sleep with snacks in there. You might attract don't some critters like snacks. we mentioned. Yes. That's mean, a very common Cub Scout problem, though, Gina, by the way. Oh, absolutely. They just, they just love to sleep with snacks. Yes. And bring stuff that, in Those the are tent. good lessons to learn. Yes, absolutely. Right. Uh, Jonathan says they've started using quilts with good R-rated, I don't know what that is, but a good rated sleeping pad underneath. I can so get behind I, that. I yeah, I that. think that's, in, in, I'm guessing he's saying instead of a sleeping bag, you use a good sleeping pad with just a quilt on top of it. That sounds like a good option. Again, not for backpacking maybe, right, but for car camping or, or, or something Or family like that. camping. Like if you yep. have a few kids that are laying next to each other in a tent mm -hmm. and they're siblings, I can see where you might be using something like a quilt. Yep. Yep. Um, and Todd, Todd says that his inflatable tent, uh, if that's the right word, is light and good to backpack with. This is the tent that doesn't have poles, allegedly. That's pretty cool. I believe Todd. I can't believe you said allegedly and insulted our viewer like that. I believe. Just, I totally believe kidding. Todd. Um, one more comment. Uh, oh, Eric says R rating. Thank goodness Eric's watching. R rating is a measure of insulation. Higher R value insulates better. So the higher, I, better insulation you get from the sleeping pad, maybe the less, I mean, definitely the less you would necessarily need for. I guarantee you, Eric just looked that up on the internet. He didn't know that. There's no way. <laughs> Hi, you don't know that. Eric it's is what? a friend of ours. We're kidding, of course. We love Eric. Eric's a, Eric is is in the art director for the magazine. He's not just our friend. Um, uh, and actually, he's not a friend. He's a business partner. Thank you. There's more. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> the last little bit I want to highlight here is our gear guy says get what you can afford. With an inexpensive bag, you can still get outdoors, which is what's most important, right? If and when you have the dough for an extra bag, it will make your wilderness adventures a little more luxurious. Definitely want to emphasize that if you are a parent or a scout leader and you're thinking, we got to put off the track, we just can't afford a sleeping bag right now, I urge you to think back to your childhood when you probably used a very, very cheap sleeping bag that your parents stored in the cupboard somewhere in the attic, what have you, and it was still pretty enjoyable, right? I mean... You were probably not wanting for a sleeping bag at that time. Was, you didn't I even know actually, anything about a mummy bag. Yes, I was actually just thinking uh, when I was a kid, I used to sleep in my friend's house. I would sleep in a sleeping bag right on the floor and was totally 100% comfortable. Uh, as an old man, that's a little bit more tricky these days. Then you know, I need like an R-rated uh, sleeping pad or something like that to sleep on makes me uh, uh, a little more comfortable on the hard ground. But yeah, uh, good advice from Mr. Lanza, our gear guy, Get what you can afford, and there's a good chance, um, you know. Well, I remember when I when I was a, back in my old Cub Scout leader days, Gina, when we started doing family camping. There were a lot of families in our Cub Scout pack who had never been never been camping before. They didn't have anything, and we were able to help them get outfitted. It really doesn't need to cost that much as you're getting started. You know, you can get certainly used tents and things like that. You do not need to buy the fanciest, uh, most expensive sleeping bag for just a family camping trip in relatively mild weather. You can do it really on a, a pretty reasonable budget. Got to agree. Now, Aaron, I think a lot of people think of you as the expert on how to care 
Oh, totally. Or a sleeping bag. A lot of people do. <laughs> Me, uh, your son. Yes, I, I'm generally just Anybody known else? as the guy who who takes care of sleeping bags. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> would, would you consider yourself the caretaker of the sleeping bags in your family? Mm -hmm, Does exactly. anybody else do it? Well, uh, no, of course no one else does. Okay. And I, I have made the mistake of uh, putting a sleeping bag that is not supposed to go in the washing machine into oh. the washing machine. And it was still usable. Uh, this was a this was a, a sleeping bag that we actually got at the office and uh, was was really, really nice and warm. And when it was done, when I got finished with it, it was still it still looked like a sleeping bag and still functioned as a sleeping bag. But it had lost all of its power to uh, basically insulate in cold weather, whatever the rating was. I don't remember what it was. Twenty degrees. Maybe bump that up to about 30 degrees at that point and just say, I mean, bump it up by 30 degrees. So it was now rated to maybe 50 degrees 50. because the washing machine or uh, and or the detergent, it might have been the detergent because that makes a difference too, um, basically damaged the sleeping bag so that it, uh, it, it lost its ability to insulate uh, because, you know, it, it was a um, synthetic bag with uh, some sort of, you know, high technology type hmm. material in there that did not like, it might've been the soap that I used to be honest, you know, I can't remember for sure. Um, but wow. generally speaking, a it's never soap, good. If what you have to say afterwards is it still <laughs> looks like a sleeping bag. It still functioned as a warmer weather sleeping bag, I okay. would say, but no longer as a cold. It still looked, I mean, yeah, it's still, you know, it, you could get inside it, wrap it around your body. And as long as it didn't get below 50 or 60 degrees, totally fine. Um, but there are some different things you can do to sort of maintain and take care of your sleeping bag, uh, both, you know, when you get back from camp, but also like as you use it, um, some folks will say, certainly during summer camp, uh, if you need a sleeping bag, you know, summer camp, let's just say that sometimes scouts, I know a scout is always clean. During summer camp, Gina, that can be a challenge. Um, and at night when it cools down, I've been to summer camps where it gets it gets hot during the day. It gets plenty cool at night. You want to snuggle in that sleeping bag. You really need to be clean. So everybody take a shower. Take a shower before you get in your sleeping bag at night. If you don't have access to a shower, wipe yourself down because all those, all that sweat, all those nasty oils are not good for your sleeping bag. Um, worst case scenario, they make it stinky. Um, uh, or sorry, best case scenario, they make it stinky. Worst case scenario, they really damage it over time. Uh, you can wipe down your sleeping bag when you're out with a cloth, with a wet cloth, just wipe it, wipe the, any kind of sweat or perspiration or stuff like that off of it and make sure you let it dry. Uh, the main thing is that sleeping bag, don't let it get wet, whether it's with sweat, whether it's water, whether it's, you know, rain, whatever it is, don't let that sleeping bag get wet. Bacteria, mold, nasty stuff will grow in there. That's one of the big things. And when you get home, air out the sleeping bag and then don't do what I did. Instead, read the instructions on the label and see what it says. Some are, some are dry clean only. Some can be washed on, um, you know, a real gentle cycle Delicate. with a special kind of detergent. Exactly. And, you know, the more I think about it, Gina, the more I think that my problem might have been that I just used regular, uh, we probably buy the cheapest laundry detergent you can get because it works fine for our clothes, but it might, obviously it didn't work for the sleeping bag that we use this for. Um, uh, Gear Guy has some suggestions on our website about different uh, things you can wash your sleeping bags in. There's a product called Revivex Down Cleaner that's made for down. Uh, the link is available at this link right here. There's something called Nick, Nick Wax Down Wash. Um, there's uh, for synthetic bags, there's a product called Granger's Performance Wash. So these are all pretty inexpensive, $9, $11, $9 that uh, you can use in your washing machine, but it's just more, it's more uh, uh, cooperative with your sleeping bag, if you will not going to damage it. And a final bit of cleaning advice, Gina, and this, I actually didn't know this makes a lot of sense. Actually, it's two bits of cleaning advice. Number one, rinse your bag out twice. Uh, when it goes through the wash cycle, give it an extra rinse cycle to make sure it's well, because you want to get that stuff washed out of it. You don't want it to dry with that soap in there. Mm -hmm. And number two, if possible, let your bag air dry, lay it out somewhere. The dryer, not ideal. If you're in a hurry, fine, not ideal. Maybe that's what I did. Maybe, maybe it was the dryer, Gina, Don't that dry messed up it. my sleeping There's no bag. need yeah. to dry it. Generally speaking, exactly. You really, at this point, you've just gotten back from your camping trip. Don't try to wash your sleeping bag the night before your trip. Wash it when you get back from the trip so it's ready to go the next time you need it. Let it air out yes. and then store it, like Gina said, where it's supposed to be stored, either either in a bag, but maybe not 100% compressed right, 
or maybe laid out somewhere under your bed, wherever it is. Yeah, big advocate for uh, with most of your camping gear, your tents, what have you, you know, letting it air dry air out afterwards that's big because a lot of even clean you know usually camping people are kind of at their dirtiest and they're sleeping on this thing that has very specific washing instructions so right i'm glad you rounded that up for us aaron i want to quickly just mention a handful of sleeping bags that our gear guy has as some of his picks first up is the coleman coleman silverton 25 degree mummy sleeping bag and guys it's quite the price for something uh, uh, rated to 25 degrees, $69. You can get it on at Coleman.com. And um, it's also stuffed with a syn- synthetic insulation with offset quilt construction that eliminates cold spots, you know, so it keeps the stuffing kind of spread out all- along the bag. Um, another pick that we've got is the Kelty Kids Mistral 30. If this is your first camping trip with a, with a you know a kid who needs a sleeping bag, this is a pretty great pick. It's only fifty dollars. Um, our gear guy says it's a great choice. The Cloud Loft synthetic insulation will retain heat even if it gets damp, and the adjustable hood opening helps seal in heat. It's also really lightweight, very packable, and it's like the most affordable bag on our list, I believe. Um, next up, we've got a North Face bag. It's the North Face Eco Trail Synthetic 20 Sleeping Bag. It's $129. That's an okay price for a sleeping bag, to be honest. Like that's, you know, it's cheaper than a lot of them. These are all pretty affordable picks. This is the drawback um, of, or, or drawback of lo- low price synthetic bags is they can be heavy and bulky for backpacking. This one isn't. It's less than four pounds. It's at, at the regular length and it packs down to 10 by 18 inches. It's not. I mean, that's not, that's pretty small. Um, It's a mummy bag and it's made for backpackers on a budget. Next up, we have the Alps Mountaineering Aura 35 degree plus bag. It comes uh, at a a price tag of $100. This is if you don't need extra warmth or weight and the cost that comes with it. It's made for mild summer nights. It weighs in at under three pounds and packs to eight and a half by 16 and a half inches. Pretty small as well. Um, last on our list is the Kelty Cosmic Drip Down 20. It's $160 and it's not the least expensive bag on this list, but it might be the best value. It's built for a three season backpacking with an EN limit rating of 19 degrees, the Cosmic is generally stuffed with water resistant 600 fill down, packs to 8 by 15 and a half inches, and weighs under 2 and a half pounds. The dual slider zipper doesn't snag, and the hood and draft collar keep warmth inside. It comes with three lengths, including a small for people up to 6'5. Try finding a bag with all those features at this price. Reminder that was $160, so pretty cool. Yeah, good gear guy does a good job of presenting our readers with a good variety, um, least expensive to, you know, maybe a little bit more expensive, but not completely unreasonable. Again, it all depends on what you need. There's no reason to spend extra money on features if you don't need them. If you're not going to be going out in the cold, why spend the money on that? If you're not going to have to pack it down into a, so if you don't want to be able to compress it into a, into a backpack to carry it around uh, eight miles a day on the trail, well, why spend the extra money to do that? Um, so yeah, so good advice to good advice for him, and just just know that you know if you're just going camping with your family, going Cub Scout camping or whatever, you can get a fine sleeping bag for a very reasonable price. Right, the cheapest bag on that list was fifty dollars. Um, mm-hmm. If you were watching that and you're like, I can't keep up with, I don't, I missed what the name of the sleeping bag I want is. Check can you out go the back link. through that again, please. Yes, we can. Yes, I will do it all now at half speed. Just kidding. Um, go to the link at the bottom of the screen, go.scoutlife.org slash sleeping bags. You will find info and product specs on all the bags that we've listed, plus some more with some of those additional resources that we have linked at the top of this article. Um, I would encourage anybody to tag somebody in the comments who might be in the market for a new sleeping bag or who might have something, you know, to add, maybe a sleeping bag expert who wants to leave some comments for future people to check out. Aaron, this is a very fun topic. I love talking gear. Yes. And uh, our, I think our readers have had a, a lot of good advice. Thank you guys for sharing. Uh, I, I don't think we shout out to Joe who said he has learned um, lessons the hard way. Um, you can stuff the stuff, you can use the stuff sack as a bear bag. 
so, so that's cool. Um, Eric says some gear stores will also rent equipment so you can try it before you buy it. I didn't it. know that's that. A, that's a great option too. Yeah, I would imagine they're probably renting used equipment, which is fine. Um, so that's a great option too. Yeah, especially if you're just getting into uh, camping. Look at the Montana Council. Uh, International, International Scout, Scout Expo. Expo. Thank you guys for watching. Wow. Appreciate that. Thanks, guys. Thank you for watching. Yeah. Come come back next Tuesday. We will be here at 3 yeah. p.m. Central for Trek on Tuesday. Also, this Friday, Aaron will be live at 2 p.m. Central for Cub Chat Live. It's going to be a fun one. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll see you guys at the end of this week and at the top of next week. We always love getting to be here with you. Um, keep the comments coming even after we're live. Bring your Cub Scout questions on Friday. We will answer those at 2 p.m. Central, like Gina said. Otherwise, we'll be back next Tuesday, same time, same Facebook channel. Good job, Gina. You too, Bye, Aaron. everybody. See ya.